What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be solving a very hard SQL technical interview question. Now, if you've been following along with the entire series, we had videos on easy, medium, and hard SQL technical interview questions, and we solved two questions in each of those videos, but we are on to the very hard questions. These very hard questions are in fact very difficult. So I'm only gonna be doing one, although there's multiple on the platform that you can try, but I'm just gonna be doing one because it's gonna take a long time to solve it. Now, practicing these questions is meant to help you learn as well as feel comfortable and get ready for these technical interviews that you're gonna get as a data analyst. The easy and medium questions are more geared toward entry level beginners or maybe even mid-level for the medium questions. The hard questions are geared more toward mid-level or senior level data analysts. And then there's the very hard. I don't think that you're gonna get a technical interview this difficult. I know I haven't, nor have I ever given one, even though I've given tons of technical interviews before. Um, I've never gotten a question this hard. These are more of a challenge, really a challenge of can you figure this out? Uh, because it's pretty difficult. So I hope that you find this really interesting. I want you to try it out. But with that being said, let's jump onto my screen. All right, so we're here on Analyst Builder. Let's go over to the questions page. Let's filter down to very hard. Now I will note, these are not under the free tier. If you go to the free, the very, very hard ones are not under the free tier. So if you wanna try these, these are the very hard ones. We have consecutive visits, Twitter addiction, employee hierarchy, biggest spenders, complex address, Uber cancellation rates. Now, today we're gonna to be trying this complex address, but if you wanna try out any of these other ones, head over to analystbuilder.com. They are super, super fun. But let's try out this complex address question. It says, you are given a database containing customer addresses. Write a query to break out the address column into separate columns for street, city, state, and postal code. Note, some addresses may have additional unit or suite information, for example, suite 5A or unit B, which should not be included as part of the street. So let's go down here, let's look at the addresses. We have one, two, three, Main Street, Suite 5A. So that's, for example, that Suite 5A should not be included, it says. Then we have New York, that's the city. Uh, I'm guessing that's New York City. Then it's New York, uh, then one, two, three, four, five. Then the same thing, Minneapolis is the city. And then we have the state and we have the zip code. I think that's all we need to, you know, the postal code. So let's start making some notes here. So we have to, the output needs to be uh, street, and I should just copy this, street all the way down to postal code. There we go. So that's what our output needs to be. There's nothing on ordering. Uh, I think the most difficult part is gonna be just breaking it out. So breaking everything out. Now, how are we gonna do this? There's um, one main way that I would be doing this, and this is using substring. Now, I've done this a thousand times in my real job. This is an extremely realistic thing, happens all the time. Data comes in just like this, or sometimes separated by commas or just spaces, and you have to figure that out, right? So this is interesting because this is separated by no, it's just a space. These are separated by these dashes. Um, and then we can't include this 5A. So I'm gonna use substring, and we'll see if this works. Uh, but with this, we can choose our delimiter, and that's really important. So we can say whether it's a space, whether it's a, uh, a dash or something like that, but we also have to note, I'll just write note right here, can't include things like suite or unit. So we have to remove that somehow. Um, let's go ahead and pull up the data over here. And let's take a look. And I wanted to do this in MySQL. Now you can do this in Python. You can do this in uh, Microsoft SQL. I had started out writing this in PostgreSQL, which uh, the syntax is actually a little bit, potentially maybe a little bit different. Actually, it's different in Microsoft SQL Server. I believe PostgreSQL, the substring is the same. Don't quote me on that. But we're gonna be using MySQL because I've been using that throughout the entire series. But if you want to, you can use Python, MySQL, PostgreSQL, Microsoft SQL Server, whichever one you feel comfortable using. Now let's run this. So I'm gonna keep everything here, but I'm going to add to it so we can confirm that the it's accurate, like our output is correct. So that's why I'm gonna keep the everything there. Now we're gonna use this substring and 
The first one that we have to figure out is um, this one right here. Now, it should be fairly easy with something like one that does not include sweet 5a. And for example, we would just do substring and we have to pass through some parameters. The first one that we need to pass through is just the string. Now, this entire string is kept in address. And so when I say we're passing through the string, we're passing through a column where it has multiple rows with strings in it. That's all, that's all I'm saying. The next parameter is our delimiter. A delimiter is something that, how are we separating this out from itself? So I'm gonna put in quotes, I'm gonna put a dash. And then the next parameter is where are we starting? So are we looking at the first delimiter, the second delimiter, the third, fourth, fifth? Because this one has multiple delimiters. This one has one right here and it has one over here. So if I put a one here, um, we get null. And that's because I wrote substring. We actually need substring underscore index. Uh, I'm thinking of Python. In Python, I'd be using substring. In MySQL, I need substring index. There we go. So now we're doing this on the first delimiter right here, but if I change this to two, now we're looking at this delimiter. So that's the well, first delimiter, second delimiter. So we only want the first delimiter. But here's the issue with this. We have, and there's a unit right here. So we have one that has unit and we have one that's sweet 5A. Here's what we need to do. We have to get rid of it if it has a sweet 5A or if it has unit B. So we'll need a case statement for this. Um, what we'll write is we'll write case and this will be our else. So if it has a suite in it or it has a unit in it, we will use the substring index on it. But if it doesn't, we're just gonna treat it as normal. This is like our normal one. So I'm gonna say, and we'll do it right here. I'll have to format this in a little bit, but we'll say when, when the address is like, and now we're looking for a pattern. We're gonna search, does this pattern exist in this? Now, uh, it's possible in some instances, if you're using like a million rows of data, suite could be in like one, two, three, suite street. I've never seen that before. Um, I don't think we need to take that into account today, but that might be something to consider in a, in a real world example. Uh, but this is a real world example, but we're just gonna include suite. And I'm going to include, and I'm gonna use these um, these wild cards. So this means anything can come before this, anything can come after this. It just has to have a space suite. Now, you don't have to add the that. You could do it just like that. It makes more sense to me because we actually need to remove that in the future. And I'll explain that in a little bit. But when that happens, when there is a suite in there, what do we wanna do? Well, we need to use substring index on it, but we cannot use the dash. The dash has got us in trouble last time. It kept the suite 5a in there. What we need to do is we need to use this suite as our delimiter. So then when it gets to that delimiter, it's not included, right? So then we come over here, we put the suite in there, let's run it. And I got a syntax error. And that's because we need an end. And we, need, and we can label it as well, but this will be our street. Uh, we have to have an end to signify that the case is done. I'm pretty sure that's the issue. There we go. And that fixed it. That's because like the delimiter with the dash, when it got to the dash, it took everything before it. So now if we find a suite, we're using that space suite as the delimiter. Now, if we put this as the delimiter, you may not be able to see it, but there should be a space right here and that might cause dirty data. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna keep it like that. We'll see if my hypothesis uh, is correct. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing, except now we're looking for, which one was it? Unit. So if it includes suite 5A or unit B, those are the examples. We need to get rid of that. And we'll use unit and let's run it. And there we go. So this looks perfect. This looks exactly like what we should be getting in our output. So now, uh, whoops, now we need to come here, down to the street. So now we have the street, but we need to get next, we need the city. So the city is right after 
the street. But here's the thing, it's in the middle. And if you've ever worked with data like this, it's a little bit tricky because uh, a delimiter only goes to one point, right? So what we can do is use a double uh, substring index. So we're collecting the substring index and then uh, within that text of that substring index, we do another substring index. So I think that's what we need to do here. So let's come down here and we can just copy this because it's already written out for us. Um, and let's run this. Now, what if we say two here? Let's run this. Um, we can do it this way and then go backward. We can do a minus. So in substring index, instead of a positive one looking forward, that's starting from um, the left-hand side of the string and looking this way for the first one. We can do negative, which starts from the right-hand side and looks this way. So left to right when it's positive, right to left when it's negative. So then we can wrap this as a substring index. And now this whole thing right here is our string, which is this. This is our string. So now we're gonna look backward. We're gonna do minus one. Um, actually, our, our delimiter first is a dash because we're looking to this dash. And then we need to go to negative one. And let's try this out. And there we go, New York, Minneapolis, Goldsboro, Maples, Flower Town. So this looks perfect. So let's keep that exactly how we have it. Now for the next one that we need, uh, and I'm gonna label this as city. Now we're gonna copy this whole thing, bring it right down here, we'll do this as state. Now, obviously this isn't gonna be our answer, but we can run it. So here's what we need to do. Before we took this whole string and we got here and then we went backward to this delimiter and selected New York. What we now need to do is we need to go, we need to select this New York, Minneapolis. Now there's a space here. And so what we should do is we should go backward to this index right there. I think we need to do that first. So we'll use that as our, our starting place and so we'll do negative one. Um, yeah, so I'll just do it. So we'll go negative one, but then we need to go forward. So this is gonna be our string right here. New York, one, two, three, or five. So then we need to go forward and our delimiter should be a space. Let's do a space right here. Let's run this. And there we go. We have New York, Minneapolis, North Carolina, Massachusetts, I think, and Florida. So that's our state and we have one more and that's gonna be our very last one. Now this one should actually be a little bit simpler because we're just starting at the very end. It's not in the middle, which is a little bit tricky, right? So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna say as, and this is postal code. I really wanna to stick to exactly what they told us to call them. I don't wanna go changing it. So now we're looking for a space delimiter, but we're looking backward, negative one. So we're starting from the right-hand side and going to the first space. And that should give us that one, two, three, four, five. Let's run this. And there we go. Now, I'm gonna get rid of everything. And let me actually come up here. I'm gonna get rid of everything. And let's run this. So now we have the street, city, state, and postal code. This all looks correct. I don't know, I genuinely don't know if I check this answer if it's gonna be correct or not. My hypothesis, what I think is gonna happen is, 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 is not gonna be correct because I think somewhere in our output we have some spaces that we can't see. For example, this suite. If we're using just the suite and not the space suite, I think we have an extra space at the end of this one right here. So it goes suite space, which I don't think is correct. And it shouldn't, you shouldn't have that in an actual output in a real database. You don't want, uh, uh, leading or trailing spaces. That's dirty data. So let's try checking it. And there we go, our, our answer is wrong. Let's try just fixing this and seeing if that's it. If not, it could also be one of these, but let's try this one now. Uh, there we go. So that is that was the exact issue. And it's really hard to catch. If you're not looking for it, you may not catch it because it is a little bit tricky, um, but that is, I, let me see if I added this in as a hint. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But that is something that you need to account for in real data. So um, I know 
that there were people in the Discord. If you haven't joined Analyst Builder and tried out these questions, um, we have a we have a Discord with like 2,000 people in it. And this question, when people have been trying to solve it, have been really having issues with this exact thing. Is they, I, it looks correct, but it's not correct. Um, that is a real world solution, a real world issue. And so that is how you solve this question. Now, you know, I have a whole video explanation on how to do this, um, as well as you can just come down here. Let's look at the solution. So yeah, this is exactly how I wrote it. Um, there are other ways to write this actually, but that is how you can solve it. Now remember, you can come in here, even in the in the questions, and go to the difficulty, and you can take a look. You can check out all these other questions um, and, and see what they look like and what the questions are. These are really tough. Uh, for example, this Uber cancellation rates is a really interesting run. Find the cancellation rates of requests with unbanned users, both client and, dri and driver must not be banned, each day between 2023, 1223, and 1225 round the cancellation rate rates to two decimal points. So this is another really interesting question. Um, and there's actually two tables here. I'm not doing this one today, uh, but these are more questions. I'll do more of these videos in the future just because I really love them. They're super fun. Um, but if you wanna try that question out, I will leave a link in the description. You can go ahead and check that out. If you have not tried out Analyst Builder already, I highly recommend it. I created all the content myself, all the questions, all the courses are all done by me. So if you like my YouTube channel, you will love Analyst Builder. It's all premium, really high uh, quality content. So go ahead and try that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video.